Hi folks, welcome back to the lab. So today we're going to continue on with our PCBWay sponsored uh, DC load project. And uh, what I've got set up here, I've got the new meter on it. And this meter gives uh, volts, amps, watts and watt hours, which is really handy. And it's, this little button over here can turn off the light, turn on the light, or if you give it a long press, I think it's about five seconds or so, it'll clear out the watt hours. Now what we're going to do today, let me tell you what we're going to do today. Today we're going to check out a couple of questions that we got from viewers. And we're going to test this thing up to the kind of to the maximum. So we've got to we've got to bring it up slowly here and we've got to look at the temperature and at the uh, dissipation of it. And next thing we want to do is we want to set uh, we want to set this up. We want to try it out at 20 amps and then we want to set it up by adjusting the value of one of these resistors here. So that when you turn it up to maximum, it's around about 20 amps, maybe 21 or something like that. What will happen is, of course, if you, if you set it up there cold, like the 21 amps cold, uh, these resistors here are going to warm up. At uh, that uh, 20 amps, you're going to have about 5 amps going into each resistor. So they'll be dissipating about half a watt. So they are going to warm up and they are going to, the temperature is going to go up a little bit. So that's going to bring the total amperage down. So we've got to set that so we can get like 21 amps or so and then we're going to test it up around about 70 volts because I think that would be our maximum the, the maximum that these uh, MOSFETs will take is 100 volts I think 30 volts is a, is a nice little bit of headroom there for us this here is going to be my uh, voltage source for testing out the 20 amps I've got these little shielded uh, plugs on it so it won't short out because that would be spectacular yeah so let's uh, let's answer that first uh, question now the question from the viewer was uh, wouldn't it be better if you didn't have that aluminum covering over the top had the channel on the top this open and that way it it could suck in some cold air and uh, some more cold air my um my thinking of it is i don't think that's going to happen i think what's going to happen if it's open the, the turbulence of the air is going to increase so you know this fan here is going to eject some air right, and that's going to cause some turbulence this fan here is going to suck some air in and that's going to cause even more turbulence so you get these little turbines going in it rather than straight laminar flow over the fins but we'll check it out either way I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference but uh, you know we want to get the maximum out of this that we can okay we're all set up here to do that let me get a temperature up on the screen here for you so you can see here we're sitting around about 68.6 degrees so let's take this off now and see what happens to the temperature Okay, it looks like we've gone up a few degrees and then the fan's just gone up uh, a little bit higher. So yeah, it definitely does make a positive difference to have this on it. And that's the way we'll continue with it. All right. Now the next question was about the program. I had a couple of people ask, they want to see the program and, and have a brief description of how it works. I'll do that at the end, just before we sign off. And then uh, I'll do that from my office. Okay, next phase here is to start bringing up the wattage to see how far we can get with this. Now, one of the things that we need to do is uh, make sure that the junction temperature doesn't rise above 175 degrees, which is typical for silicone devices. Now, right here we're at 60 watts, and we got a temperature of around about 71 degrees. Let me get that up on the screen for you here. Okay, so we're about 70.5 degrees at 60 watts. So let's do the math on that. So we got 60, divided by four because we have four devices so each device is handling 15 watts multiply by 1.3 which is the uh, derating factor for the number of watts that are going through it which equals 19.5 and then we'll add to that the 70 or so degrees that we're seeing now and that we're at 89.5 so we're, we're well away from the 175 we got uh, 85 degrees of headroom here. So let's now, let's bring it up to 80 watts and see what the temperature gets up to. Okay, it looks like the uh, fans stepped up in speed a little bit and it looks like we're kind of narrowing in on about 74 degrees C. 
at 80 watts. So let's do our calculation here. Get 80 divided by 4 times 1.3 plus, let's say, let's call it 74. So we're at 100. We still got 75 degrees to go. So uh, let's bring it up to a, a hundred. So we're at a hundred watts now for a little while here and the fan is going up and going down and we're seem to be cycling around about 80 degrees C. So let's do the calculation now. 100 divided by four equals times 1.3 equals plus, call that 80 degrees. So at 112.5, we've got lots of headroom. So we've met our design goal of 100 watts. Let's set up for the next test. I didn't mention that before, but what I want to do is I want to test to see this thing really shuts it down once it gets up to a high enough temperature, and we'll see what that temperature actually is. So to do that, let's bring it down to a safer wattage because we don't want to exceed the 175 degrees under any circumstances. The way I'm going to test this, I'm just going to remove the fans so that's getting no cooling at all. And that should raise the temperature up and then uh, this should trigger off. So we're at, looks like we're at about 69 degrees and it's going up rapidly. And just watch for this red light to come on and then this should all drop right down. Okay, came on right there at 85 degrees. So that's that's good. You see now we're down to, uh, oops, down to 0.3 amps, 0.26 watts. So basically it's shut down and it won't come back on even if the temperature drops. As you can see, if we put the fans back in, the temperature starts ra dropping rapidly now and you'll see that's not gonna come back on. So it's, uh, the, I've designed it specifically this way and just in case the the reason it failed is because the fans have failed or the fans have got plugged up with dust or something like that and you want to clear the problem before you can have this thing popping back on again and and uh, destroying itself so we're down to 60 degrees and it's it's not going to come back on again okay uh let's set up for the the next thing which is going to be to run the current up to 20 amps and then uh, test this voltage here so i've got to test this voltage between the, the black and the red here and that allowed me to do a little Ohm's law calculation to figure out what that resistor should be so let's set up for that so folks uh, something spectacular happened but it happened off camera and uh, I'm sorry you didn't get to see it it was it was quite exciting um, I plugged this battery in. this battery is at 4.2 volts and I plugged it in here and uh, even though this thing was shut down all the way and I wasn't recording any current going through it this thing just started to smoke. Now there's no there's no short here, and it, the the wires got so hot that they melted their own solder. Now the battery itself didn't get warm, but the solder on the wires here melted completely off. And uh, I I don't know I I can't understand what happened because if we plug the other power supply in there we can see everything is, is normal with the load. And, and this is what I expected to see because I had everything turned down. You know, the load's working fine. It's not shorted or anything. So I, I, I have no idea what happened there. It's a mystery. Yeah, so I'm not gonna be able to test it at 20 amps. I'm going to assume that it can go there and come back to that test in the next episode. So right now I'm just gonna see if we can get it up to 70 volts. So we're started off here at uh, 40, 42.8 volts. Let's bring it up to half an amp. So that gives about uh, 35 watts at 70 volts. And let's start bringing up the voltage now. There we're at 70 volts at uh, half an amp. And everything seems to be fine. So we've met almost all of our design criteria here. It'll certainly do 100 watts, no problem at all. The fans respond as expected. The thermal shutdown responds as expected and we can get it up to 70 volts. We just haven't been able to test the 20 amps. I feel sure that'll do it because each one of these uh, transistors here is, is rated at over 50 amps. So we have uh, 
200 amps capacity here in the transistors. So that shouldn't be any problem at all. But we'll have to wait for the next video to do that. So let's go up now to the office and uh, we'll give a little explanation of the program that runs the fans and wrap up. Okay, so here's the program that I'm using to run the fan controller. Now C2 is assigned as the pulse width modulation output. A C1 is assigned as the load enable disable. This I use for the thermal shutdown. We start off here by setting up the parameters for the pulse width modulation. And then we set C1 low. That means that that MOSFET that pulls the reference voltage down will be off and the load will be enabled. And here's the main section here. So C4 is set up with the thermistor on it and it's got an analog to digital conversion. So we read the voltage across the thermistor, put that into the variable B0. So if B0 is less than 46, and 46 equates to less than about 35 degrees C, then we set the variable W0 to zero, and then that drops out of the if and if statement, and then we test to see if B0 is greater than 94. So if it's less than 46, it's not. And then we set the pulse width modulation duty to whatever value is in W1. In this case, it'd be zero. There'll be no energy going to the fans whatsoever. Now, if, if B0 is greater than 45 and less than 91, so between about 35 and 70 degrees C, what we'll do is just this little calculation here. So we'll set B1 to B0 minus 45. So that way B1 starts off at zero and then grows up to 45. And so we take B1 then, we multiply it by 6, and we add 747 to it. So 747 is about 75% of the pulse width modulation. That's the minimum required to get the fans going. And what this does, does it here, it gives it 45 different levels between this 747 and the 1023, which is the maximum. That's 100% pulse width modulation. Actually, uh, 6 below that. We'll drop out of this at 1017. If it's over 90, we'll pop up to the next step of uh, 1023. And of course, then we drop out of the end if statement. We test again to see if it's over 94. Uh, if not, then we go down here and set the pulse width modulation to whatever in W1. It's either zero or between 747 and 1023. And then if it goes over 94, that's when we set C1 high, which turns on that MOSFET, pulls the reference voltage down to zero and shuts off the load. So that's it. A very simple program. And that's how it works. All right, guys. Uh, thanks again to PCBWay. For making this happen i really appreciate it couldn't do it without them and uh thank you guys for coming on out i think it was a pretty good day uh, I, I wish i could have shown you the smoke it was there was quite a bit of it uh it took me by surprise i and i still i don't know how it happened this saw a short circuit and, uh, there you go it did at only 4.2 volts quite amazing well we'll see you in the next video about this for sure that may be in a couple of weeks time i've got some things that i have to get together i'm waiting on some bits and pieces to be able to build it up into the final case and that's what we'll do in that video including testing it out to 20 amps all right folks thank you very much for coming out bye bye now